Just two weeks after the California's 2024 election, the truth finally comes out. California faces a massive fiscal crisis. The politicians have been covering it up all along, and now they want to raise your taxes to pay for their mistakes. Coming up, we'll tell you all about the crisis and what we're doing to fight back to protect you from having to pay the piper. I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California, and you could have seen this coming a mile away, right? I mean, I, those of you who've been watching this show know that we've been warning you about the fiscal house of cards that's about to collapse in California because of the reckless and wasteful, irresponsible spending of California Democrats. But it is now known that we have a major fiscal crisis. Uh, a shortfall in the coming budget year. But when you look beyond the immediate budget year, you see a sea of red ink as far as the eye can see. More importantly, Democrats are not showing any willingness to curtail their reckless spending. They're looking for every way to impose tax increases on you. Here is the uh, story from KCRA News in Sacramento. Listen in. California is likely facing another budget shortfall this upcoming year, and there's a warning tonight that the state may not have the capacity for any new spending. Yeah, that was the message coming from California's top financial and policy analyst and KCRA 3 Capital correspondent Ashley Zavala explains. What California's legislative analyst presented today was really the first look at the state's financial situation heading into next year when lawmakers and the governor have to figure out how to spend your taxpayer dollars. And while state revenue is coming in better than expected, the outlook shows lawmakers and the governor have some hurdles ahead. Uh, this report is intended to serve as a starting point for legislative the legislative analyst Gabe Pettick releasing his update on California's budget situation. He says so far it's roughly balanced, but still projects a two billion dollar budget shortfall in the upcoming year. What's helping is the solidly performing stock market and top earners providing a cash boom. But the state has growing spending commitments from the expansion of state programs to money related ballot measures voters approved in this election. The LAO said that could translate to budget deficits between $20 billion to $30 billion in the years to come. Ah, so that's the real story. You got a $2 billion deficit because they're revenues were higher than expected because we've had a very strong uptick in the stock market. Uh, and uh, we don't know if that's going to continue. I think a lot of people are enthusiastic about the possibility of Trump coming back in. We could be up for some rough waters ahead. And uh, you've got the state, even with a rosy scenario, opening up uh, massive budget deficits in each of the following fiscal years. And remember, the reason why this all happened, and we warned you that this was going to happen, is that the politicians and their bureaucratic advisors, including this guy, the LAO himself, they got it wrong about what revenues would look like uh, all the way back in 2022. And Cal Matters actually is a liberal blog, but at least they get it right um, substantially on this one. Uh, in saying that the uh, politicians back then ratcheted up their spending with all this new um, money from the um, COVID uh, era. And I can't say it because, you know, the algorithm doesn't like it when we talk about what happened in the past. They like to suppress any discussion of that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the budget deficit. I'm just saying when they got all that COVID money, um, you know, they ratcheted up their spending. They gave away a bunch of goodies like illegal immigrant um, freebies. Uh, so all that came out. Uh, they ratcheted up their spending. And then suddenly they were caught with their pants down because, boom, the revenues uh, uh, dried up. Um, no more printing of money in Washington, or at least not as much. And the state did not then reduce its spending back down to more sustain sustainable levels. Uh, so remember, when they say here are our projections, the reason why we're in this problem is that their prior projections were completely wrong. Cal Matters says um, uh, 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 
Governor Gavin Newsom's uh, Department of Finance, based on one short-term spike in income taxes, projected that revenues from state three largest sources would remain above $200 billion indefinitely. That never happened. Okay, it fell apart. Within a few weeks, Newsom and legislators learned the real revenues were falling well short of the rosy projections that they adopted in their budget. Uh, The damage in terms of expanded spending was done. This is also what we call cooking the books. Cal Matters is trying to pretend like it was a mistake. Um, it's also called cooking the books. Okay. They intentionally uh, overestimate revenues. They underestimate expenses. They sell uh, everyone on the fact that they've passed a balanced budget and boom, uh, you're left holding the bag. Not the politicians, you, the taxpayer. And then they blame you. Well, you're not paying enough in taxes, and that's why we have to raise revenues or else grandma's going to eat cat food. Again, cut the wasteful spending, and we can actually live within our means. Um, the $2 billion is going to turn into 20 to $30 billion thereafter um, in each and every one of the three years coming up. And that's without a recession. That's without a dip. And again, I should always remind you that um, you got to you know, plan – for downturns in the economy, particularly when you have a robust stock market that's been on a roll for a while and uh, you don't know what will end up happening uh, with all the economic uncertainty. Uh, That's why on day one, when I take office, because I'll be sworn in as a state legislator, uh, California state representative in the assembly, the state assembly for district 75 on December 2nd, um, one of my first bills on day one, will be a balanced budget accountability act because we've got to start getting control of the wasteful spending. Um, I'm proposing a constitutional amendment to fix the problem of the state fiscal uh, uh, policies and the reckless spending. It has a couple elements in it. Number one, it requires that we go back to requiring a two thirds voter uh, uh, legislative approval for the budget. Right now, the supermajority gets to uh, simply vote by a majority vote the budget into effect. If it were two-thirds, then the minority party that would want to pump the brakes and be a bit more conservative, be a bit more rational on the spending, would have a greater voice. I believe we need to go back to that system because a lot of the cooking in the books, a lot of the reckless spending and irresponsible programs have come about since we eliminated the two-thirds budget vote requirement. Second, I believe that one of the biggest problems we have, the power of the government unions, are the labor costs. Most of these government agencies are bloated bureaucracies with massive number of staff that are unneeded, unnecessary, um, and massive salaries and and benefits, pension benefits, that are way over what is necessary to win the war for talent in the local labor market. Uh, Some studies suggest that we're paying 20% to 40% more for the cost of labor uh, in government. And that's that's on on a salary and benefit basis. It's not with the added bureaucracy and all the layers of bureaucrats that are doing absolutely nothing. So I'm proposing that in this constitutional amendment, this Balanced Budget Accountability Act, that we roll back labor costs by 5%. Basically, just take a 5% cut across the entire state budget in the labor costs, labor labor uh, uh, accounts. Um, and if you th- say that we can't figure out how to find savings of 5% in every department, come on. Seriously? Government is fat. It is inefficient. It is bloated. 5% you could literally take just by throwing a dart up against the wall. Um So I think we can thoughtfully get 5% easily. And then it would require that every budget that's adopted thereafter would not be able to grow labor costs faster than the adjustment in salaries nationally for average workers like you and me in the private sector. So if our wages are going up by 2%, government should not be giving uh, wage increases of more than the 2%. Um, We should be market-based. Otherwise, it's predatory. Government is taking advantage of the fact that it can tax you to give bloated benefits and salaries to government workers. Um, Third, we should be always looking for cost efficiencies. So we would require that every government agency look to do competitive bidding. 
uh, to do outsourcing, to analyze how their work is done and to see if there's a more efficient way to do it. Could the nonprofit sector do a better way? Could another government entity do a better job? Could the private sector do a better job? Routine competitive analysis, looking for cost efficiencies. Um, it doesn't hurt to get competitive bids, a couple bids on a project or on a program and see if we can get more uh, cost efficient ways of delivering services to you, the taxpayer. This is what a normal organization would do. This is what working families do. Why is government excused from having to cut costs and be efficient? Under my initiative, my Balanced Budget Accountability Act, we would force government to finally live under some fiscal discipline going forward. Um, I'm going to be talking about some other bills that I'm going to be introducing on day one in the coming days leading up to my swearing in on December 2nd. I would love to get your feedback. So sound off in the comments below. Tell me if you like this idea. Are there additional ideas that you would like to put into some of the legislative proposals that I'm going to be offering? Because look, Reform California's movement, it's a grassroots movement, but now we've got voting privileges in the state legislature. Yeah, only one vote. But I want that vote to be informed by your ideas and input. So sound off in the comment section. Um, also, please throw in a contribution to our movement. We are trying to promote these pieces of legislation. Uh, we're also trying to hold politicians accountable. If they want to vote down our ideas, then let's vote them out of office. So we're going to be engaging in candidate recruitment, training, mentorship, and support and endorsements in the next election, as we always have. Plus, if the legislature doesn't want to act on some of our ideas, we'll put it on the ballot ourselves by collecting signatures through citizens initiatives. Chip in a contribution right now at reformcalifornia.org. Help me restore fiscal sanity in the state of California. And if you're not already signed up, please sign up at the bottom of the website. All you need to do to stay in touch with our movement is put in your first name, your last name, your email, your phone, and your zip code, and we will keep you up to speed on all of our fights in the state legislature and what you can do to help us out. So that's the state of California budget crisis. Of course, they waited until after the election to reveal what we all pretty much knew, that these people are worse than drunken sailors with a credit card. Um, we've got to do better by California taxpayers and no, raising taxes, absolutely not the solution. Join us in our fight to restore some sanity in California. Until next time, I'm Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California and incoming state legislator. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. But before you click away, please subscribe to this channel and click that notification button so you get updated when we post new episodes. Plus, like this video and share it with your friends so that we can help spread our message across the state. Reform California with Carl DeMaio is paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly.